Hello, my name is Rebecca. I am a wushu athlete and this week's video goes through all of the miscellaneous wushu projects that I have been up to since all of the miscellaneous wushu related things that I have been up to in the last month since competing at Phoenix Nationals. The first thing that I did that was wushu related was actually not do any wushu. Uh, I just knew for myself that after the intensity and volume of training that I had done preparing for the competition, it was important for me to take a little break. So I took two weeks, I lay down a lot, I spent some time with family, I did a little bit of skiing. The only real wushu that I did was poses for some fancy wushu pigs and messing around with the remote, which I will talk about in a little bit. Um, but other than that, chilling, relaxing, spending time with family, and recharging, getting ready for some more training. At the start of my break, I was actually pretty exhausted, <laughs> um, but by the end of it, I was absolutely itching to get back into the wushu guan, so I'd call that a successful break. After traveling so much, first from California to Phoenix, and then Phoenix to Seattle, and then Seattle back to California, uh, I had to wait for a negative COVID test before I could start training again with my coach and my friends. So in that time, I just got out and wanted to have a little bit of fun by myself. The wushu that I had been focusing on for the last four, five, six months is more characteristic of 90s era wushu, so I thought it would be really fun to totally mix things up and try some combos from the current All China Games champion, Lai Xiao Xiao. What I did was first I found a couple of her combos that I really liked. I screen recorded them at full speed and then at quarter or half speed um, and tried to study the movements, figure out what was going on. And then after watching the combos a couple times, I took a tss. Wait, quick pause for a second. So I know that a handful, that a lot of my viewers now are much more experienced wushu practitioners than I am. Uh, and I just wanted to say that I am actually very open to any constructive feedback that you might have, tips, things that look weird, suggestions, very, very open to it, and very, very curious about what some people might have to say about the moves that I'm working on, my technique, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, That said, unless you are my coach, I may or may not listen to your feedback or advice. Um, though I still absolutely appreciate it. So just thought I'd say that. Yeah, okay, back to the video. Here I'm gonna play on repeat the best friend of these combos and I think I'll put on the other side Lai Xia Xia herself. The two main differences are speed and rhythm. I am much slower, and because there's a little bit of wonkiness with how my body is turning, my rhythm is a little bit off, um, but this was just for fun, and I think in that, the mission was accomplished. The next thing that I have been up to is that my Wushu combo reel from Instagram was chosen by Wushu Live to be the combo of the week. Thank you, Roger, and huge thank you to everybody who did this combo in their miscellaneous various ways really blew my mind um, and made me really happy to see. I think that wushu movements are basically just memes and social media is great at facilitating the sharing and creation and uh, subtle changes that happen with memes. So it just was really cool to see two and two together, wushu as a meme proliferating as a bunch of different people do a combo with some variation that made it unique to them. That was just so cool. You know, I originally did this combo back in the summer of 2021. At the time, I was doing some online private lessons, but for the most part, I was just going outside after work, training by myself. And anyone who's ever done that knows that one, it's a little bit lonely, and two, it can be hard to like get that wushu fire fueling, burning in yourself as you train. So what I did was I got really, really into Douyin, which is the Chinese side of TikTok. On Douyin, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of athletes sharing their wushu, commenting on other people's wushu. Um, so it was really fun to have that interaction when outside of that, for the most part, I was like kind of on my own. Also, I found it super duper useful to structure my training around making a TikTok video. Reason number one is that I had to film myself. Reason number two is that I had to watch myself back and really compare between multiple versions of me doing the same movement. What is better between each one? What do I like? What do I dislike? What looks weird? And three, I had to try to do the same small series of moves over and over again, each time with as good intention and expression and technique as I possibly could to get that one continuous recording of a combo that I wanted. So overall, it was really fun and really great training. 
I also found it a really interesting challenge to make wushu combos that were suitable for the vertical screen for vertical screen stationary camera filming mode. Something that I noticed about Gen Z's dance moves is that they all kind of like stay in place, right? Because they gotta, they gotta fit in like the TikTok video. And this combo, though it has a lot of different moves, it doesn't actually go anywhere. And I think that if I were training to continue to perform for a Douyin audience, then my wushu would probably trend in that direction of being trying to do as much as possible without actually moving. Yeah, just an interesting thought about how the medium that you do wushu in influences how that wushu turns out. Anyway, luckily I am no longer in that situation. I have a coach, I have a wushu school, I have people to train with, um, which brings me back to the present, back to Dublin, California, training with the one and only Ding Wei, China champion, Asia champion, total badass, and just really genuinely nice person who I like a lot. Coming back to the Wushu Guan, of course, one of his first questions to me was, what are your new goals, Rebecca? Um, and this is something that I have been struggling with since competition because I don't really know what, for me, the ideal relationship to competition is. My utmost, deepest desire as a Wushu athlete is just to learn Wushu. And I think that competitions provide a really fun and great structure to cultivate wushu skills. But for me, winning a competition isn't really the end-all be-all of what I want for myself. Um, so I told that to my coach and I told him that I'm also just interested in increasing my foundational knowledge, increasing my baseline skill level, um, and also learning some skills that I kind of skipped over or never learned at all when I was first starting out as a wushu athlete. Uh, I showed him the video of the Hangzhou Basics, which when I first saw this video, I looked at it and said like, that is what I hope my training, that is like what my dream training would be like. You know, me and like a bunch of other people executing these foundational movements beautifully. It is my dream for my training to one day look like that. So I showed that video to my coach and he was like, okay. And we kind of went from there. One of the moves that we started to learn, this one's called a Shuan Yao. He's helping me find the angles with the stick of learning. This range of motion is super duper new to me. So you can see I'm kind of uneasy on my feet. I kind of get lost in space on the way. But the good thing is I think over the next couple of weeks, I've already become a little bit more comfortable moving in my back in that way. Um, and I hope to get even better, faster, stronger at it. Another big area of improvement is that basically every single day I come into practice, my coach tells me that I need to stretch more. Uh, <laughs> so that's so I have been stretching. Um, here's me stretching. Uh, it's hard. <laughs> I think because I started as a gymnast, I kind of thought like, oh yeah, I already have all the flexibility that I need to do wushu, which is absolutely not true. I still have a lot of timbu kongjian, um, so gotta stretch. Big shout out to my coach and my non-wushu coach, my strength coach and wonderful human being, Colin Cook, for getting me to do bridges for the first time in many years. This used to be very easy for me. Now it is very hard, but it actually feels kind of good um, to start working in that range of motion again. So, so thanks Colin for uh, helping me along that path. And I think this will also help get some good extension um, throughout my upper body in all of my wushu movements. And yes, I do use my squat rack as a drying rack. Anyway, other things that we've been working on are just adding some new weapons movements to my weapons movement vocabulary. Uh, for your watching pleasure, here are some clips of my coach being a total badass um, and demoing some of these moves. I think more experienced athletes might look at this and say, mm, <laughs> looks a little bit advanced for you, Rebecca. And I agree, um, but I'm still having a wonderful time stretching myself and trying to get these new skills. Um, as you can tell, when I see them, I feel like this, like my eyes bug out of my head and I think to myself and I feel to myself, I have to learn this. Um, so this is me trying my best. I will end this video with a training highlight, which is that when I first started this movement here with the spear, trying to uh, do a jiao chang, doing the circle and then go up and the circle and then go up again. Um, it was really awkward at first and I couldn't quite get the leg and the upper body to all open up in sync, especially like in that spinning spear motion. But then I practiced. And then I practiced some more. And then my coach was like, you practiced and it got better, um, which is the best feeling. 
one last wushu related project that I have been working on um, is this thing that I'm doing here. This is another thing that is completely new to me. Um, if you know what it is, tell me in the comments below. I'm assuming that a lot of people who watch these videos also are, are probably much more familiar with it than I am. Anyway, that is all for this video. I have been honestly, I feel every time I come into wushu practice, like I'm falling in love with wushu again. It is so exciting to learn new movements and to explore moving my body in different ways. And I'm excited for more training. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. If you have questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. I am behind on replying to comments, but I promise that I will get to them soon. Thank you so much for watching and have a awesome, wishful day week.